It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to jump on the Sharp Interactive Board. We're going to go through Sharp's first half, FY 2023. The numbers are in. The numbers aren't good. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's important to understand the wounded. And today I want to share some thoughts. Somebody reached out to me and they said, you know, Ray, when, when, when Conica Minolta had their big impairment charge, you showed a bathtub full of blood and said it was a bloodbath. Sharp Electronics had a big impairment charge. We know they had a huge impairment charge, and that was in their fourth quarter of FY 2022, which ended in March of 2023. But I got to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Even though the Sharp robot's beat up a little bit, you can see he's got bandages on. He's got the, he's got the cane. I, mean, I believe he's going to heal because Sharp's issues are related to one of their business units, the display business unit. Display device business unit, that's where their issue is. All the rest of their organization is doing just fine. Could their operating profit be more? Sure, it could be more. But it's above the line. It's consistent. Sharp Electronics was not losing money all through COVID. You know, Conica Minolta has been losing money for three straight years. The year they're in right now doesn't look that good for them. I mean, think about Conica. They're halfway through FY 2023, just as our friends at Sharp are. They're showing a $5.3 million operating profit. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the first time they've been above the line, and they're above the line at 0% in three and a half years. That hasn't been the case over at Sharp. Sharp has, has a factory, and that factory produces products, and the products it produces, the demand is low. But when you understand the products it produces, you realize, well, the demand's gonna come back. Because the issues that Sharp's having are in their display device business unit. And folks, that's automotive displays, that's smartphones, that's PCs. You know, that, that technology is gonna be needed. The problem is right now, it's just low in demand. And there's a cost of capacity, and that's what's going on at Sharp. It's all about a cost of capacity. And they have to get that factory. They have to get it up and running more and more and more. They need more demand. Because at the end of the day, their cost to deliver what they're delivering through that business unit are too damn high because there's not enough demand. But when I think about my friends at Conica Minolta, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of their issues are in their healthcare business unit. That Ambry genetics, genetic testing, they're so far outside the scope of an OEM's reality. Come on. I mean, you think about it. Sharp's an OEM that makes stuff. And, and the stuff it makes will have, you know, supply and demand issues all the time. That's just the reality of being a manufacturer. But at the end of the day, when these manufacturers stray so far outside of their core competencies, I think it causes them a lot of problems. And that's really what I see going on at Conica Minolta. And so I think it's important to understand the wounded. Because as you understand the wounded, then you can decide whether or not you feel like they're going to get better. In the case of Sharp, I believe the bandages will come off. I believe the cane will go away. So without any further ado, let me share my presentation. Let's talk about the top line revenue for all of Sharp, $7.7 .7 billion. Their operating profit at negative $38.5 million. Not a good thing. They don't get off the hook. It's not good to have a negative operating profit. But ladies and gentlemen, when you look at where their problem is, it's in one business unit. It's in the display device business unit. They lost $196.6 million against a revenue of $2.3 billion. They're, they're down. They're down 13.7% in revenue. And they need to get that revenue up to $4 billion, $3.5 billion, and do it quickly. The, the demand needs to come back. You know, they, they, they've invested heavily probably too much in this display device business unit, you know, and, and they're going to pay that price until that demand picks up. But when you look at what they do in that unit, you have to believe the demand will pick up. But at the end of the day, they have a cost of capacity and it's killing them at this point. If you look at the Smart Life Energy business unit, 1.5 billion top line revenue for the first half, 94.3 million in operating profit, 6.4%. There's nothing wrong with those numbers. If you look at the Smart Office, that's where those friends of mine live that sell supply and service print equipment. $1.8 billion for the first half, $65.7 million operating profit, 3.7%. We need to get that number up. You know, Sharp needs to get, get their operating profit in that, in that smart office business unit up to 7, 8, 
I mean, they got to do it. They got to they got to continue to improve efficiencies and lower some cost. If you look at the universal network, 971.2 million had an operating profit of 19.9 million, 2.1%. That brand business overall, which includes Smart Life Energy, Smart Office, and Universal Network, is 4.3 billion of the 7.7 billion, had an operating profit of 180.7 million or 4.2 percent. It's this display device unit, ladies and gentlemen. Total revenue, 2.3 billion, operating profit loss of 196.6 million. In that, in that same category, if you will, you have electronic device business unit. Did 1.3 billion in revenue, had an operating profit of 30.5 million, 1.9%. But ladies and gentlemen, that brings the loss for the device business to 166 million. They had some adjustments of a negative 53.1 million. I want to address these adjustments. You know, Konica Minolta calls it corporate, etc. Over here at Sharp, they call it adjustments. I believe these adjustments, that corporate, etc. over there at Konica. It is a place where where costs kind of get lost and unaccounted for. The good news over in Sharp's case, it's only representing 0.7% of the revenue. In other words, their, their adjustment losses are 0.7% of their revenue. Wait till I show you the percentage of revenue, the corporate, etc. losses that kind of come in Ulta shows. Because I think it's when you have a bunch of unaccountable cost and losses, that could that could mean that you're trying to maybe hide something. You're, you're trying to take costs out of other categories to make the profits look better. And that's really what I believe Konica is doing until they prove me wrong. But at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, let's look at that. At Konica Minolta, corporate etc. losses for their first half are $94.4 million. 2.6% of their total revenue of $3.6 billion. I mean, just think about that. If Sharp would have put $200 million in losses inside their adjustments, it would be the same percentage as Conica. That's, that's a lot. Could you imagine if they just dumped all the costs down there in adjustments? Yeah, that's, that's, where it's all, that's where all our losses are. Let's not account for any of that. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a big problem over Conica Monolta for a long time. And, and until they really explain what's going into that corporate, etc., with some real details... I believe they're just pulling costs out of other business units to make those look better. That's just my thinking. It's my show. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to think about Konica Minolta and think about Sharp. Both organizations, pretty big impairment charge. Both organizations have some problems. They got to get through these problems. But when I think about Konica Minolta, this precision medicine and all these things they're doing that are so far out the scope of an OEM, and then when I think about Sharp, you know, ladies and gentlemen, the PC business market will come back. The PC business market got oversaturated during the COVID. Everybody bought a new PC. Well, the time's kind of moving along. And pretty soon those PCs will get relayed, will get replaced. We'll see a replacement happening pretty soon the next couple of years. Smartphones, they're not going away. They're only getting smarter. Automotive displays, we're only putting in more automotive displays. This display device unit is pressured by competition. And, and at the end of the day, they have to have enough demand. And if they don't get the demand that's adequate, the cost of capacity is going to kill them. But if you ask me which one will recover easier, I think it's easier for Sharp to recover than it is for our friends over here at Conica Minolta. I mean, I mean Conica Minolta's got that $200 million put they got to deal with regarding the Embry genetics. Ladies and gentlemen, let's look at the forecasting because I want to make a kind of a bet here on the end of the day with Ray. So Sharp, they want to have $17.1 billion in top line revenue for FY 2023 with an operating profit of $267.3 million or 1.6%. Our friends over at Conica Minolta, they want to have $7.7 billion top line revenue for their FY 2023. They want a 1.6% operating profit, which would be $120.3 million. Currently, Konica Minolta is sitting on $5.3 million in operating profit. They need $115 million more to hit that goal. Our friends at Sharp are sitting on a negative $38.5 million operating profit, so that means they need $305.8 million. I'm going to bet that Sharp gets the $305.8 million they need, and Konica Minolta doesn't. That's my bet.
right, we'll see what happens. FY 2023, it won't be long before it's over. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to show this. I went on the consolidated financials and dug around a little bit. But uh, Sharp it definitely has an issue with asset to equity ratio at this point. 85.3% of their assets are encumbered. And at the end of the day, that's too much. Okay, we all know that. But here's the reality. When you have a massive impairment charge, it affects your assets big time. Our friends over here at Conica Minolta right now on their consolidated balance sheet, they're sitting on $1.8 billion in goodwill and intangible assets, which represents 20% of their total assets. Are we going to see another really big impairment charge going on over there at Conica Minolta? Especially as they start to realize that this is all covered and that big fantasy and all the stuff they bought underneath all covered probably ain't working out right especially as they start to probably eliminate their direct operations. So at the end of the day, 20% of their assets are intangible or goodwill. And if they have another impairment charge, they're going to find themselves in that same situation. Sharp took, Sharp, you know, Sharp took a hit. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about how that they took a hit and it was a bad hit. But it's in one area of their business. The rest of their business units have pretty good discipline. And at the end of the day, the worst scenario for Sharp, they get rid of that whole display business unit. Would it be painful? Hell yeah, it'd be painful. But it's more reasonable for them to get rid of that and move on successfully, as opposed to what you think Conica Minolta is going to have to do to clean up their mess. Ladies and gentlemen, the cost of goods over at Sharp are 84%. That's just outrageously high, giving them a 68% gross profit, proving my point. The cost of capacity... Is, is killing them. And they have to get more demand in that display device business unit. It's dragging them down big time and it's affecting their cost overall. This is one of the reasons I wish these OEMs would separate this out by, by, by different business units. It, it, because when you lump the whole conglomerate together, it just kind of buries a lot of things. It, it can hide a lot of mismanagement. It can hide a lot of problems. There's nothing better than showing those problems front and center, especially if you want to correct the problems, right? If you look at the selling and general expenses over at Sharp, it's 16%. That's pretty damn low. I mean, Kia Sarah was doing great at 24%. 16% is good. So you can see at the end of the day, it's their cost of goods is killing them. Their cost of goods is killing them. They need more demand. When you look at our friends over there at Conica Minolta, the big number that always jumps out at me is that 45%. It's 45% selling in general expenses. That's a huge amount of money. That's a huge percentage. They're, they're, they by far win that contest. I want to wrap it up with this, and I want to have a warning to my good friends at Sharp. Don't build a Conica smorgasbord. I mean, you, you remember Conica? They ran around, they bought all this crap. I call it the Conica Services Smorgasbord. That workplace hub, the 3D system thing. Sharp, you cannot make mistakes. You know, you, you have to focus on your products, make those products even better than you make them today, make them better appliances, make better PCs, make better MFPs, make better laptops with your Dynabook laptop. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of things you could do at Sharp, but focus on products and, and then the, the services around those products and maybe some of the softwares around those products. But running around trying to build IT services business, just, just look at what Conica did. Don't build a services smorgasbord because it ain't going to work out. I mean, when I, when I did the comparison between Conica Minolta and Rico in the services, and you could see that, that Conica Minolta's revenue is extremely low for them doing this for almost 15 years. And at the end of the day, Sharp, if you focus on your products, and you help customers navigate between the intersection between the digital and physical world with those products, you'll do just fine. Clean up, clean up your, 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 your de display device business unit, you'll do just fine. And everybody watching me knows this. Status quo is the killer of all that will be invented. Don't get stuck in status quo, and I'll see you all tomorrow.